Okay, we're going to do a within group design one way ANOVA, also called a repeated measures ANOVA. It's a one way because there's only one variable, and that variable is normally what we call time. So here's the data. Da, 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 da. So these little numbers in the thing here, these are your DVs. These are the number of uh, claims for sexual harassment at this giant company that's got millions of employees. And over time, right, they did a pre-count before the training started, the you know sensitivity training. Here's week one, two, three, four, and then they did a follow-up six months later. So that's what happened over time was they were trained about what constitutes sexual harassment. Okay, so that's that. So we're going to go ahead and transfer this data over into the SPSS. Okay, here's all the different variables. Again, for a within group repeated measure study, it's it's like a paired t-test. Each variable has it have its own file. I'll say that again. Each variable has to have its own file, okay? And these are all scale numbers, okay? And here's the data, what it looks like. And here's what the data looks like, okay? So now we're ready to run our repeated measures ANOVA. We're going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Repeated Measures. The first, this this should be your x-axis, whatever you're going to title it. So I'm going to call this uh, training. Normally you can, you can call it time or something. But this one's training, and we got uh, how many levels? One, two, three, four, five, six. We got six levels. We're going to add that. Now we have to define what our levels are. So this one is real basic. It's just a one-way ANOVA. There's level one, level two, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just going to do them all at the same time. Kabam. So let's see what our options are. We don't need model. We're not going to do contrast, which are plan comparisons, by the way. But I do like to look at the mean plots. So we're going to put the training on the horizontal axis. And we're going to add that. Post hoc, eh, we don't really don't need it. I'm not going to do any post hocs here. And other options. Yeah, we always get descriptives, estimates of effect size, power, 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 homogeneity of variance. So the three Assumptions of an, uh, a regular ANOVA apply here as well, with a new one called Sphericity, which we'll, we'll, we will be going over. So, But I think we're good to go. Let's click OK. Here is our output. So here's the different levels of our repeated measure, right? They're all named. Here's the descriptive statistics for each one of the levels, right? And there's the means and the standard deviations. This multivariate test is going to tell us if there was a significant difference between the different training slots. So in other words, was there a significant change over the time period between the six different measurements? And we normally look at the Wilkes Lambda. You can look at some of these other ones, but Wilkes Lambda is the one that we use around here. So there's the value, there's the test statistic from Wilkes Lambda is 0.12. That generated a significance of 0.029, which is less than 0.05. So we get to say, yes, there was a significant difference over the six different training periods when it comes to the number of sexual harassments. Our partial at a squared is very strong. Uh, in fact, about 99% of the variance between the scores can be attributed over the different time differences between the training. So in other words, the training was effective at reducing the number of sexual harassment claims. And our power is huge. It's uh, 0.832. Normally, we want our power to be at least 0.8 and above. So now let's check out the rest of this stuff. So remember, sphericity, which is a, it's the only extra assumption for within groups ANOVA, besides a regular one-way ANOVA, 
right? The, the data has to not violate the rule of sphericity. And I, I hope you watched a little sphericity video. But this is how you tell, right? Here's the, uh, the Mauchly's W, 0 0.004, and it generated a significance of 0 0.097. So if this significance was less than 0 0.05, you would have violated the assumption of sphericity. But we did not. So we're just going to go ahead and continue. So our, you know, our data is strong and significant. And we already know there's a significant difference between the groups in there. So again, you're, here's your within subjects. Uh, it, we're going to get the exact same results uh, where the sphericity was assumed, and it did prove it. But our, if you'll see here, our F scores are huge. It's uh, almost 51. And again, that's going to produce a very, very tiny significance. And, and basically, we're just going to repeat, repeat what we said before, that there is a significant difference somewhere between the pre and week one, two, three, four, and the post. In other words, the, the training was effective at reducing the number of sexual harassment courses. I think that's about it. Let's double check here. We don't care about between subjects because it's a within subject study, right? In other words, everybody was in every treatment or training, so that was, that was kind of easy. But now here's, here's an overall looking at the, uh, the means plots. So here's the pre, right? It was way up here. And then there's after the first week, it went down a little bit. And then, you know, the more training they got, the less cases were filed. So it, it seems, again, it seems to be that the, uh, the training was effective at reducing sexual harassment. But that's it. MGZ, out.